that brings us to our second presentation of the afternoon, and this time it's my pleasure to introduce another Australian, the, the, uh, the first of two, I think, on the program. Uh, Richard Bean is the Deputy Chairman of the Australian Communications and Media Authority. In Australia, we, we, we know how to regulate. We've got a, an ACCC that does the Commerce Commission work, and we've got the ACMA that does a whole pile of, of other bits and pieces as well, as well as regulating spectrum. Some of the things that the ACMA does are done by the Commerce Commission, other things are still done by your department, and yet other things I think you've escaped entirely. Um, the, the, uh, the great pleasure for me to introduce Richard is that we used to be colleagues together at a company called, what was then called Unwired, is now called Vivid Wireless, and as of today is going to disappear into the bowels of Optus. Um, news, news from across the ditch that the Optus has just bought a 2.3 gigahertz TD LTE business to, for the geeks amongst you. Um, uh, an, interesting, an interesting move. Uh, the ACMA has done some interesting work over, over recent times. The, the, under the chair of uh, Chris Chapman, they've been making a, a big distinction between citizen and consumer. And also the ACMA and some other people in Australia have been focusing again on the question of convergence. So Richard's brief is to talk to us about the digital citizen and convergence. So if you could please welcome Richard Bean. Thanks, David. And we do that regulating so well, don't we? Let me just get set up here. All right, um, I'm going to briefly touch on uh, quite a wide range of things and show you two quite long videos to illustrate a couple of the points I'm going to be making. Um, they're dramas, so I hope you'll be entertained. I'm conscious that it's the graveyard shift, so if you're not, you can have a little sleep. Um, no, you can't. And in fact, <laughs> David will be watching you. Um, the second one, um, I'll tell you a little, little story about the second one. Um, one of the things that, that we do is um, broadcast content regulation in Australia. Um, and uh, when I first saw this video appear in the board papers, um, I thought it was going to be a, um, a classification matter. It's called The Quiet Signs of Love and has a very nice picture of a couple in their early 20s on the cover. Um, but it wasn't, as you'll see, um, and I hope I haven't old, oversold it by telling that story. Um, and that won't um, perhaps leave a lot of time for questions, but as David said, um, maybe we can explore things in the panel session later on. I'll say a little bit about Australia's national broadband network um, and then examine the importance of citizen confidence in a digital economy. And I'll do that with particular attention to the ACMA's CyberSmart program which is where the first video I'm going to show you today comes in. Um, there's teenage romance in that one. Uh, following that, I'll briefly discuss the Convergence Review, currently underway, and present some ACMA facts and figures related to broad broadband demand, usage, and digital literacy. And I'll conclude on the theme of online participation and social inclusion. Uh, with the second video, which presents the work of the National Relay Service in Australia, which um, assists people with a hearing or speech impairment. Uh, I was going to tell you a bit about the ACMA, but David's done that already, um, so I'll skip that. Um, one thing we don't do is um, competition law, other than media ownership diversity rules, um, which we have in Australia. Um, as David mentioned, competition belongs to the ACCC. Um, the ACMA was created in 2005 as a converged regulator designed to bring together the threads of telecommunications, broadcasting, radio communications and the internet. So it does have an extraordinarily wide um, remit. Um, and of course we regulate these uh, evolving industries in a country with some unusual characteristics that have influenced and continue to influence particular uh, communications market dynamics. Um, the Western Island is very large but it has a very high concentration of population living in quite small, discrete areas. Um, about 65% of the population lives in an area that is just 0.5% of the continent, um, and with just 10% of the population spread across 93% of the land mass. Um, Australia's achieved quite um, remarkable connectivity across that land mass. 
um, with such an extreme population distribution. And as at um, June 2010, um, folks, um, do I have to point it at something? Um, 3G networks provided access to voice and data services to 99.09% .09 of the population. Um, Canada is the other OECD country with this sort of population distribution challenge. So geography is one of the factors informing broadband connectivity planning in Australia, and like many OECD countries, Australia has announced a national digital strategy to promote the development and take up of broadband, and in April 2009, the NBN was announced. Um, to pick up on some of the terminology from this morning, the government has taken the up adoption risk, um, and in, a, in, in other terms, um, the egg has been laid, I suppose. Um, we're waiting for the chicken to hatch. Now I've gone backwards. OK. Um, NBN Co is required to provide all Australians with access to high-speed broadband. That's everybody. This obligation includes constructing a fibre-to-the-premises network to 93% of the population, um, at providing speeds of up to 100 megabits per second. The remaining population will receive services via wireless and mostly in remote areas satellite um, at at least 12 megabits per second. It'll be open access, wholesale only, uh, with nationwide price equivalents. Um, a key government objective is that a person's ability to receive affordable high-speed broadband services should not be affected by where they live or work. Um, the NBN will assure that every community in, a re in regional Australia gets fair access to affordable high-speed broadband. Uh, the government also recently released its National Digital Economy Strategy setting out a vision to realise the benefits of the NBN and position Australia as a digital economy by 2020. Uh, one critical digital economy goal enunciated in that strategy is that by 2020, the gap between households and businesses in capital cities and those in regional areas will have narrowed significantly. Um, and it's also true to say, of course, that the NBN will be a vital infrastructure component in continued communications and media convergence. New platforms, applications, business models, value chains, forms of social interaction are flourishing clearly with much more to come, um, given the dynamic environment of hardware, software and connectivity developments, changing social attitudes, behaviours, increased citizen expectations and globalised economic shifts. Um, in November, the ACMA published a research paper entitled Developments in Next Generation Applications and Services, which looks at the ways internet protocol-based next generation networks providing ubiquitous high-speed connectivity remove the barriers um, to the development and use of, for example, collaborative and distributed applications. Um, drivers of demand for high-speed connectivity discussed in the paper include e-health, e-education, teleworking, um, HD voice and video telepresence applications and distributed grid computing. Um, it looks at the cloud, social media, wikis and important issues arising along with demand for these applications like security and privacy. Many of these matters are also highlighted in the Commerce Commission's research that was published in the lead up to this conference. And it seems to me that in particular you can't overstate the significance of cloud computing. Um, I was going to say in that context that spinning media are dead, as I heard someone else say at a conference recently, but we're actually going to have to use DVDs to play the videos this afternoon, so it's not dead quite yet. Um, like all of our work, this paper is available at engage.acma.gov.au. Now, it's been clear to us at the ACMA for some time that in the face of this great change, there is a collection of problematic concepts amongst the details of Australian communication and media regulation, as the strain on old legislative and regulatory concepts from new technology developments has grown. And in August last year, we released a paper called Broken Concepts. Some 55 legislative concepts are analysed in the paper, most either broken or under significant pressure from the effects of convergence. Uh, a few examples from uh, the four worlds that the ACMA regulates um, illustrate the point. 
Uh, from the world of telecommunications, the notion of a public mobile telecommunications service is a central one in our regulatory system. It's tied to current mobile cellular technologies and obviously will come under pressure as mobile converges to use the IP standard. Uh, from radio communications, cognitive radio is an example of a fundamental development straining concept such as interference and allocative efficiency. Uh, in the now well-established world of the internet, inter interactive gambling services, for example, are currently dealt with under our Broadcasting Services Act. In fact, everything internet is just a schedule to the Broadcasting Services Act at the moment. In the world of broadcasting itself, increasingly strained are the, con the concepts of a broadcasting service and even a program, as well as the notion of degree of influence as a regulatory principle in terms of media ownership. But I do want to emphasise that we're not just interested in reporting things that convergence has broken. Uh, we're far more concerned with fixing things or keeping and keeping them fixed. Um, and we see our role very much as communicating and facilitating as much as regulating, as you'll see on our tagline. Um, and in, as a counterpart to the broken concepts work, uh, we published a piece entitled uh, Enduring Concepts, um, which considers the, the, the more fundamental concepts that underlie regulatory and non-regulatory responses in media and communications markets and considers how these concepts might be applied in a converged framework. Um, many enduring concepts, of course, um, are already visible in our current media and communications laws. Um, in Australia, for example, in media ownership and control mechanisms that reflect the concept that there should be a diversity of perspectives expressed in the public sphere uh, to promote pluralism and sustain a healthy democracy. Um, of the 16 enduring concepts identified in the paper, though there are, th there are a few, three, that are identified as convergence concepts which expose issues of concern and opportunities not envisaged or anticipated by and certainly not articulated in current frameworks. Um, these are confidence by citizens and consumers in using new communications and media services, coupled with the recognition of shared responsibility for making these work in the public interest. Digital information management, the appropriate treatment of personal data in the digital economy, and digital citizenship, the idea that to participate fully in a digital society with all of its new services and devices, a quite different kind of understanding and expertise is required than has been the case before. Um, digital literacy and an understanding of individual rights and obligations are of growing importance to effective engagement in social, economic and civil life. The ACMA has over the last few years explored the notion of citizen obligations, as David mentioned, and citizen responsibilities and we've documented them in another paper um, from 2010 called Citizens and the ACMA, um, which is also available on our Engage website. The idea of, active, um, of the active citizen developed in that paper represents an important shift from a predominantly rights and entitlements based foundation of citizenship to citizens looking after their own and their families' well-being. And implicit in this is the need to educate citizens about how to do that, which brings me to CyberSmart and our short film Tagged. CyberSmart is a national cyber safety education program developed and managed by the ACMA as part of the Australian Government's 2008 commitment to cyber safety uh, for which they provided $126 million over four years. The program's target audiences, um, the target audiences are young children, young people, parents, teachers and library staff. There's a lot of material at cybersmart.gov.au which is worth looking at if you're interested in that sort of thing. The Cybersmart team at the ACMA developed Tagged. It's our first dramatic short film and is aimed squarely at this school demographic. It's a citizen-centred educational intervention, if you like. It tells a story that's all too recognisable to many teenagers. Some friends post a rumour about a classmate, sparking a chain reaction of increasingly risky behaviour. The consequences are serious, but neither is at the end of the world. So let's have a look at tags. You might need to dim the lights. Hey, check this out. 
that Chloe? Yes. Right. 
I, I don't know, I just thought this was meant to be just fun. This is fun. It's not really for Jack. Raz, he deserves everything he gets. Okay, let's start again from the top of the page. And what love can do that dares love attempt. Therefore, thy kinsman... Okay, hey, there's a girl in the front. Come in what? Don't know. Keep going. Alack, there lies more peril in the thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou, but sweet. Hey, Jack, this is me. He's expecting you to do this one. I'm going to grab your books. tonight about the fight at your school on the internet. Mm. Do you know these students? Yeah, apparently they're my class. So glad you're not involved. We didn't film the fight. Yeah, but we started it. It's bullshit. Jack's a big boy. They're gonna look at the blog. So? It's probably on a million websites by now. Mm, maybe Russ is right. We should take a photo. And the photos of Ben and Chloe. Okay. I'll take it all off. I think we should say something. What? We should apologize. To who? Jack? Chloe? Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Then I'm just going to forget about it. What do your folks think? Your mum will have a heart attack. A perfect daughter. I don't care. I wonder what she'd think if she saw those photos from Jack's party. She doesn't know where I heard it, right? Isn't that what you always say? Okay. Hey. Maybe I can ask Jack to take the gallery down. We're in this together. Fun, right? Mm. Are you saying anything to anyone? No. If you're gonna say something, you tell me first, yeah? Yeah, well, oh, same class. Hey, Jack, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. Um, What's up? Look at this. 
Is that you? Jeff and I took up on we were going out. Now we sent it to everyone. You can't even really tell it's you. There are others and they're not just close-ups. Well, how much do they show? Why are you showing me? Why did you tell him? Well, you should have told Jack yourself it wasn't fair. Oh, is this fair? I said I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with you. First you get in a fight. And then this thing with Kate. If you end up on a register for sex offenders, you're lucky they don't charge you. So my phone will be on the day all night, so you call me any time. Mum. I asked to come here, I know. Love you. Thank you. So which school have you come from? Once we're finished here, I'll take you over to your home room. And you get two keys, don't lose them because they cost $20 to replace, okay? Okay. Hello? Hello? There you go. So, Louis XIV was a sun king, and he had the divine right. Can anybody tell me what you think the divine right of the king?
don't recognise me, do you? No. I'm Lou. We met at Jack's party. Oh, right, I'm Kate. I know, I've seen your photos. Don't worry, I mean, it'll be old news. Yeah, got my counsellor says. So what have you got now? Maths. Is this semester one? <laughs> yeah, semester two. I'll talk about English. Do you know where you're going? Really? I'll show you. Um, video is accompanied by a whole set of teaching resources for teachers um, and is recommended for 14 sort of classes, year nine sort of age group. Um, I'll now get on to some more sort of information in the intermission before the next movie. Um, we think that this sort of educative approach um, looking at cyberbullying, sexting, digital reputation management um, is um, an important approach to these kind of issues, um, crucially using the media that young people themselves use, and that that's going to be an increasingly important part of the portfolio of measures that are less traditionally regulatory in nature that agencies like ours will be using to assist the development of successful digital citizenship. Um, it's at cybersmart.gov.au and on YouTube. And I've left the gadget behind. Now, um, you may be aware, I'm sure you are aware, that media and communications regulation of all kinds has been under intense scrutiny in Australia at the political level in the past year in particular. There are currently underway an independent media inquiry a review of the National Classification Scheme by the Australian Law Reform Commission, and an independent convergence review, which is examining the policy and regulatory frameworks um, that apply to converged media and communications in Australia. Um, and only a week or two ago, Professor Jill McHugh, who's Dean of Law at the University of Technology in Sydney, was appointed to join the ALRC as a commissioner for a copyright inquiry, and is expected to consider whether the exceptions to um, copyright prohibitions, including copying for personal use, query in the cloud. Um, uh, these exceptions that exist in the Commonwealth Copyright Act are still adequate and appropriate. Um, this is an interesting twist. Um, Gerd was talking earlier about attempts to control copies. Um, in the federal court at the moment, there's an attempt to control on online access. Uh, of material, we might get a chance to talk a bit about that later, but it has the unmistakable whiff of a rearguard action about it to me. The Convergence Review published uh, an interim report before Christmas. That report has attracted a lot of comment, um, much of it negative, um, from many industry participants. Uh, the ACMA has no, made no public response and we won't be before the final report is released. Um, it's expected to integrate the findings of the other reviews. Um, classification review on matters of content standards, um, the independent media require, inquiry or in regard to media ownership and professional standards in print media. Within the scope of their terms of reference, each review has signalled that a new platform neutral policy and regulatory framework is needed for communications and media in Australia. Convergence has been our day job at the ACMA for years. Um, just one example is the long-term thinking on numbering um, that we've been doing, you know, what are phone numbers in an all IP world. Um, importantly for the ACMA, significant recommendations to the role of and functions of the media uh, and communications regulator are expected. For instance, the Convergence Review has recommended a single digital economy regulator with broad and flexible powers. But now to some data. Um, I don't have too many graphs and curves, but I've got some information 
from the ACMA communications report. Every year we publish this report. It gives a comprehensive picture of the telecommunications landscape in Australia. Um, as an example, Australian internet subscriptions increased by 15% during 2010-11 to 10.9 million, and that's not including mobile subscribers. Uh, broadband subscribers amounted, accounted for 95% of that market. Um, the use of the internet via mobile networks continued to surge um, during 2010-11. Uh, mobile wireless broadband services, uh, that is, other than handsets, uh, increased by 39% to 4.8 million. Mobile handset internet uh, subscribers increased by 43% to June 2011 to 9.7 million. Um, perhaps unsurprisingly, 90% of Australian smartphone users went online using their mobile handset in the six months prior to April 2011. In parallel with market developments, which saw an explosion of apps and dramatically increased data allowances under mobile phone plans. Now, while mobile internet services dominate growth in internet subscriber numbers, fixed broadband networks continue to remain the heavy lifters of the digital economy, accounting for about 93% of the 274,000 terabytes of data downloaded by Australian users during the June quarter alone. And um, as was mentioned earlier, we expect the offloading of wireless data to fibre networks. Um, we take that into account in our planning of spectrum demand as well as the demand for ubiquitous fibre. Uh, the ACMA is the spectrum regulator in Australia. Uh, the growth in adoption of broadband services is accompanied by more intensive online participation. There was a 56% jump in the average volume of data downloaded by Australians, reaching an average of 25 gigabytes during the June quarter of 2011. Clearly, fixed line broadband and mobile internet access are developing as complementary services. Wireless internet meets needs for consumers wanting location flexibility and so on, while fibre will continue to be more suitable for those seeking really bandwidth hungry services. Australians' commun communications and media habits are changing. The trends reported in the communications report show an online experience that is becoming richer, more data intensive and increasingly integrated into everyday life at home and at work. Uh, in October last year, we published a key piece of qualitative research entitled Digital Australians, which examines the attitudes of Australians, of adult Australians in particular, to media content issues and their expectations for regulation across different platforms. The study found strong community acceptance of increasing use of digital media and a positive attitude towards online engagement. But at the same time, many research participants did not feel confident about technology or feel safe from the risks of being online. Unease about activities online seemed stronger than concerns about content. Only slightly more than half of respondents in the survey were confident in managing the security of personal information online and protecting their computer from malware. Participants in the Digital Australians research raised privacy and security issues related to the misuse of content that individuals create about themselves, personal content that others post about them, and the collection of use and use of personal information by businesses. They also showed an awareness of the evolving roles of the individual, the private sector, and government in ensuring that online experience is positive. For example, most recognises that individuals needed to manage the privacy and security risks um, posed by social media themselves. They perceived social networking services and service providers, I should say, as only intervening if content was illegal or violated important terms and conditions. They also acknowledged the importance of protecting children from accessing inappropriate or unsuitable content online. But many saw this as the primary responsibility of parents. While it was an area in which participants in the survey thought there was a role for both content service providers and government. The research indicates that Australians accept their responsibility in the online environment while also looking to industry and government to help them in managing that environment. Earlier on I referred to the Australian National Digital Economy Strategy. That strategy recognises that targeted action is required to maximise the extent to which the benefits from the developing media and communications environment are enjoyed by all Australian families and communities and to minimise the extent to which digital exclusion overlaps with and exacerbates social exclusion. 
Besides closing the regional connectivity gap, the Australian Government has set a number of digital economy goals to foster citizen engagement and what is referred to as active participation. Active participation can be understood as the ability of a citizen to effectively use media and communications to further their goals, whether they're social, cultural, political or economic, whether they are individual or community goals. Our goal should be that this participation is available to all citizens, regardless of factors such as age, literacy or disability. And I'm going to conclude my presentation this afternoon by screening a video that reinforces the importance of paying attention to the enduring values of communication, participation and social inclusion in a broadband enabled society. Quiet Signs of Love illustrates the important work of the National Relay Service in connecting thousands of Australians who are deaf or have a hearing or speech impairment. Now let's have a look at that.
Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound like I'm the disabled one. You know Hannah, don't you? Yeah, yeah I know. I know her through the deaf community. Are you deaf? If you were to put a label on it, I'm hard of hearing. But I see myself in both worlds. I've got my deaf friends and my hearing friends. And how's that working out for you? I've only got a problem with people who think it's a problem. There's text. Emails, lip reading, Auslan. I check the roster every day using the NRS website. Can I?
Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. I call my grandma every day like that. Are you having problems with her? She won't let me help her. She's not looking for someone to save her from her deafness. Put yourself in her shoes. I've got to go. See you there. Thanks for your attention. Um, happy to take questions. We, we, we have got uh, about five minutes of questions, so a lot of what Rich has done there will, I think, feed into the panel nice this afternoon. But does anyone have any specific questions about work that's cur currently going on at the ACMA? Um, this must not be an Australian audience. I'm more than happy to let you go and have a cup of tea or coffee. Um, 
I think when we uh, when we do have the panel this afternoon, it will be fun to it will be fun to talk about the distinction between the regulate regulate a regulator who focuses on the active citizen versus a regulator who focuses on on let's call it regulation. It's it's actually quite a good good feed for some of the stuff we want to talk about. Can I ask you all to thank Richard again? Thanks. And we'll go for an afternoon tea break.